We return now to the case against Hamid Hayat, the man from our area convicted in 2006 of terrorist activity. Uh, his conviction and sentence have been overturned by a federal judge, and that means that he could soon be out of prison. Defense attorney Mark Reichel, who knows this case very well, is right, live right now with Nikki to talk about how we got here and potentially what could happen next. Nikki. All right, so we have defense attorney Mark Reichel joining us now to break down this case. Mark, you know this case really well. You were an expert witness involved back when this first happened. Yes, during the trial. Uh, so first, his family wants Hamid Hayat to be released from prison. What is the likelihood of that happening? In federal court, even though now he's the, it's the same as if he's just been charged. Mm -hmm. So you have to look at it that it's still what they consider a really serious case. The judge okay. here has set aside the prior conviction. So now he's innocent until pro proven guilty. However, it's still a really serious charge. So the statute involved, the Bail Act, federally is still going to say, look, you're looking at serious charges. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be whether he's a flight risk and whether he's a danger to the community. I think danger to the community is going to be tough. He's been away for 13 years. And a flight risk, I think that's also tough. However, uh, I predict it's probably going to keep him detained. So let's talk a little bit more about the judge's decision to decide to throw out the conviction, vacate the conviction, because we have to think about when this case happened. This was right after 9-11. Everybody was high on alert. The feds were going after terrorists. We had the war on terror with President Bush. So this was a very high profile case. Well, extremely high profile and high priority. The mm -hmm. FBI agents across the nation at the time scrambled. They dropped bank ro robbery investigations, any investigation they had into fraud and so forth. They dropped and went out and specifically looked for these type of terrorism cases. They had paid informants everywhere, infiltrating everywhere, providing information. And they'd find something like this, where somebody made these inflammatory statements that were dangerous statements. Mm -hmm. They wrapped them up and brought them to court right away and sent them to trial. And so in some of the documents, the judge says, you know, I don't really know his lawyer did him any good in terms of how he was representative, represented, called the job ineffective, so to speak. Yes, exactly. There were extensive uh, evidentiary hearings held mm -hmm. by a magistrate judge that took quite a bit. As obviously, this has been going on for almost, you know, 12 years now, it seems. And so the magistrate held hearing, heard from a lot of lawyers. I testified as well. And at the end said, look, this was below the standard that's required for this serious of a case. Mm -hmm. uh, she did fight really hard. The judge, in, ironically in this case, the trial judge in this case, gave a lot of bad rulings to this woman, okay. this lawyer, and then 12 years later signs the order releasing him or vacating the conviction saying she didn't do a good enough job. But um, they did make a finding that it was below the level that's needed for a mm -hmm. case that's this difficult. All right, so in your opinion, what happens next? The U.S. Attorney's Office is going to make a decision on whether or not to retry him, and there's okay. a lot of factors they have to look at. And I think they're going to take a good look at public opinion as well and the equities of whether or not he's actually innocent and all of the developments since. It is a different time mm -hmm. than it was, as you identified. Right. It's a much different time now. All right, Mark Reichel, we appreciate your expertise, as always, in breaking this down for us. Thanks for being here. My pleasure.